I'm going to get the negative ratings from all my answers. Nothing like the warm welcome of a protest to wake you up in the morning for a year to clarify your views, and that, that clarified our views. You know, there's always been this thing about Palantir, which is um, partly understandable, like shadowy company, works with intelligence services and lots of industry. And there's an easy answer to what we do, which is like we're a data integration platform, which provides software that's actually operational. But the truth is, the, the real answer involves which product you're buying. If you're buying the Intel product, which has kept in all modesty uh, Europe and many other Western countries and some non-Western countries uh, largely safe from terrorism with the help of uh, some people maybe potentially in this room uh, by uh, provide, providing a platform where you can find terrorists and organized crime while protecting civil liberties. That's one thing we do. That's what we became famous for. Uh, that's a very well-known product, especially used in highly regulated Europe. Uh, we have a product, a number of products we built, and we're in the, the actual shadow world of the military that we mostly have not talked about, products that for special operators so they can map their operations, so they can share their data, so they can get data from space, so that they come home alive and well, and occasionally other people don't. We uh, built a commercial product uh, that first failed, and we built a second commercial product. If you're COVID vaccinated in an English-speaking country, America and England most notably, you got your vaccine because it was distributed in Foundry. It was also the product that powers Airbus, uh, powers a lot of activities at Credit Suisse, heavy industry. Um, and then we have another, we have a bunch of products that are kind of Germanic. You have to be highly technical to understand why you need them, like Apollo, which allows you to work on-prem as if you were working off-prem and provide preventive maintenance to your software that are very hard to understand but actually power your life. And that all comes under the rubric of uh, a company that's not, we're not particularly uh, communicative. And so we get this reputation of being a little bit in the shadow of the night. And some of that sometimes is justified. Sometimes it's not, you know, the U.S. spending on military is about $800 billion. Russian spending on military is about $65 billion. But I think uh, China's, I think, is roughly $300 billion. But people look at the American spend and wonder, you know, could they do the same thing for much less money? And that, I think, has led people to really underestimate the value of um, what, what will actually happen if you have heroes, which are the most important component, relatively simple kinetic things that blow things up, and an ability to organize where those things go. And by the way, the other shift is uh, people tend to think of offense, defense, but this it's really unclear whether this is uh, offense as defense or defense as offense, but it's very clear that the courageous kinetic plus software side of this is had much, much more powerful than anyone would have realized. And I think that's just going to shape the way people. It also, by the way, means small countries can outperform big countries. It means that considerations of countries wanting to invade other countries will be very different in the future. Very similar reason it's very hard to find terrorists without violating civil liberties. You have to be able to take apart the data and reconcatenate it and, and across systems, systems that are not built to communicate, and when they are, or uh, maybe communicate too much. So there's a huge heavy lifting piece that involves software here. And uh, one of our products foundries ideally built for that. And obviously, uh, that's something that we all care about. And I think you'll see that we're increasingly involved in that space. Just being open and relatively honest about what one thinks is an act of courage nowadays. We've been doing this since inception. You know, when we built PG, this is post 9-11, really no one cared about data protection. We spent an extra two years building data protection in the core of that product and all of our other civilian products. You know, and then we've made hard choices. We haven't worked in certain countries ever. Uh, we didn't have to pull out of Russia, as an example. Uh, um, and uh, we've made decisions to not work in certain countries where we could work. And, 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 our, and you could say, well, that's easy. Well, tell your investor that you've just cut the addressable market from their perspective in half uh, while telling them you're not planning to go public and then try to survive with the job. We have walked away from deployments. We were the first to speak out against uh, a Muslim database in America, which presumably people somehow thought we would build. Uh, we were the first people, I believe, to explain to Silicon Valley publicly, not over a cocktail party, that we were not gonna support the parasitic nature of building companies. Uh, we were the first people to do that, uh, speak with our feet. We left Silicon Valley. Uh, we did a DPO, which basically means I took a huge risk of becoming broke, 
which is my own risk, because if you do an IPO, they kind of give you a sum ahead of time. And then, you know, I was on record uh, calling, warning my fellow progressive Trump was going to win. Well, first of all, is ICE, not everyone may know what ICE is. ICE is essentially um, the institution in America that is well known for being in customs or border control, although they do a lot of other things which Palantir is used for, like stop human trafficking, prevent drugs from coming to America, like fentanyl. Almost all human trafficking in America is actually stopped by ICE. But they uh, are responsible for deport the deportation of people in America who are undocumented. Uh, our product is primarily not used for that, actually, although we also you know, avoid uh, kind of what I would call you know, white-toothed Disneyland marketing. It is used primarily for uh, deporting undocumented uh, felons. People were correct to point out that while you're deporting undocumented felons, you may notice that people who are not felonous also get deported. And that was, that's a real issue in America. Important to say in, in this context that um, that is actually not an issue in Europe. Europe, Germany as an example, uh, uh, you know, quite happily and according with the law does deport you if you're in the country without a, a visa. I lived in the country with a, in Germany with a visa for many years. I, but uh, that was a very important and difficult issue. But it was also, quite frankly, much more difficult because, you know, of course, they were using our software for the same thing under President Obama and currently under President Biden. The real issue was people trusted that Trump would do the wrong thing. And then there's a real question of if you're in conformity with the law, but the actor is someone you don't trust, is the law still the law? That was the core issue. And lots of Palantirians were either unhappy with the fact that we didn't back down or quite frankly unhappy with the fact that they, like me, were being protested every day. You know, it was a hard decision. I'm glad we didn't back away. I would say part of the reason we didn't back away, though, is because Silicon Valley has every excuse for never backing forward. Like, there's always a reason in Silicon Valley why Silicon Valley cannot help the West, cannot help America, can't help your governments, but can export the highest quality revenue to their company and get a, a 50 multiple on it and capture a lot of personal value. And I, I believe that you know, I obviously understood and understand that America is like any large institution and it needs to be critiqued. But um, in general, I believe that, you know, the West in general, America as well, play a crucial role in peace and well-being. I think current events kind of show that bias to be largely correct. I talked to a number of people at Palantir. Um, there was a little, of course, um, back and forth of information. Um, and I realized again what I had realized before. You much loved and revered in this company. You also feared in this company. Um, the feared yeah, part, I don't know there. who you talked to, but I, we, I know you, you can, would, you can, you can a, yeah. The revered part, may, I, I hope that's Maybe not with true. the people present, but, um, and um, uh, like, you may be, you're, you know, very, I mean, uh, you're very close um, in the sense that, for example, you do Tai Chi classes uh, at the Palantir headquarters and other things. And yet you also seem at times aloof and far away. So I was wondering, what kind um, of a leader, what kind of a boss are you? You know, I, you know I, I, I paid my bills for a number of years writing papers on Freud and as because I was a basically, you know, trying to be an academic in Germany. So I always wonder, like, when you ask the, the person, what kind of person are you, even if they're not trying to lie, like, do, do you get an accurate answer? I am definitely much more of an artist and than a normal human being, and certainly than a normal corporate leader. I think on the positive side, I have very, very strong opinions about people, and I'm willing to fight for them. It's sometimes hard to convince me, uh, and a lot of the ideas I have look very crazy. And I sometimes will avoid where I think my crazy is right, trying to engage in dialogue uh, and I'd be much more trying to convince the person that, that the crazy thing will work. But I, I would say, you know, I, my parents, very super high IQ and also kind of very like Palantirians. And I, I think it's like this Sisyphusian thing where you re, re, go back to the problem you had as a child. Like, how do you get your parents to be successful? And so I have this very deep relationship with Palantirians, but it is probably more about getting us to be successful despite our talent. Palantir still hasn't turned out a profit. Uh, we heard that probably this year. Um, uh, well, you know, finance people love splitting hairs, but we, we made money. It's just we comp our people fairly, and if you deduct the comp. But okay. if you're the, running a lemonade, if you were a lemonade stand, you would have made 424 
million dollars in lemonade profits. But All we right. can't use the P word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It takes five years for us to build one of our core products. So it took five years to build PG, it took five years, all these products I mentioned. It takes a long time with big enterprises. So, you know, build product is five years. Maybe you begin selling it year four, full productization is year five. We have a number of products. We work a very complex business. But yes, um, uh, I think the duration on building enterprise is very different. I, I do happen to believe that because the duration is long, the longevity is even longer. These are very, very complicated enterprise software products we're building. And it, it, even if you are you know, the best in the world at it, you're going to take three years to get them so you can ship them and another year and a half before they're fully productized. And we have five products. I am certainly, certainly in the inter intellectual tradition of the left. What is that? The intellectual tradition of the left is, first of all, a tradition that believes in quantifying things does believe that we should decrease violence, believes that workers should participate in the means of production, means that people should participate, which in my view means they should have some participation in the economy, an ability to participate in all areas of society, and should be able to prove themselves and uh, do well like everyone else. Uh, now, if you define leftist as something which arguably is not leftist, yeah, sure, you could argue I'm not a leftist, but then I, I, would, I would say historically, if you look at what left, left of center has meant intellectually, I'm pretty squarely on the left. And of course, there is, you know, uh, historically 40 to 50% of our revenue comes from outside of America. And in America, I'm definitively a leftist. In, in say, Germany or Switzerland, I probably would be kind of center, center right. But, but then center, center right people in Switzerland and in Germany uh, are see as, uh, as it as given that poor people will be well educated, that, uh, that older poor people will be taken care of, that everyone has, to, has a pair of teeth in the front of their mouth. I, I do believe that we still count as communists in Texas. If you're a leftist, of course, you teamed up to found, um, to found Palantir, among other people, with a rightist, which is Peter Thiel. Is this clash of political views a problem? Well, you know, we've been fighting about politics since we met at Stanford. Um, I, you know, I always think that these things are a problem if, it were like, if there's some kind of surprise or if you're, if you're committed to only having friends that agree with you. So we always disagreed politically. We still disagree on a lot of issues uh, politically. We do, in my opinion, seem to have a somewhat similar view of what it means to build a business, what a successful business will look like, um, and very things that are perhaps more ephemeral but more relevant to our business. And the fact that we don't agree politically, I think mean, it's kind of refreshing. You can have similar assumptions and a different interpretation of those assumptions. Now, we don't always have similar assumptions, but there is, like in this Venn diagram, an overlap of assumptions. There's often not an overlap of conclusions in the political realm and, you know, and a pretty healthy discourse on the business side. Although, I would say, you know, Steph and Peter and I have made a formidable team in the last couple of years. And, um, you, know, the, you know, both of them are, I view as good friends. You know, it's, it's very easy if you're, you know, maybe like me and you're not highly tax optimizing and like how many, I, my hobbies are cross country skiing, Tai Chi, how many pairs of cross country skis can I buy? But how many teachers can you buy? I mean, the, you can make it expensive and less expensive, right? Yeah, but, you know, no matter how creative you are, I can afford my cross-country skiing. <laughs> um, and uh, it's... Uh, Happy um, to hear it. But, uh, but I think the key thing, and that's why I think software is so crucial, part of the instability of the West is, is a legitimation crisis, to quote a famous term. The average person does not know what they're getting from their institutions, and to the extent they know, they're not happy. You change that, and by the way, change it doesn't mean finding terrorists without data protection. It means finding terrorists with data protection. It doesn't mean fighting wars because you can win. It means being so strong no one fights with you. That you get citizens who are happier and more peaceful and more tolerant. And that's just, you know, that's a better way for all of us to live. Thank you very much um, for this broad conversation. I think we got a good idea about the man and the company. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.